my opinion after this presentation. Boys and girls are usually similar and different. So the same is But uh, I think that uh, uh, the familiar education and social requests are different for girls and boys. So the autism um, evolves in a different way for girls and boys. Uh, I agree with the relators who speak about a necessity of an appropriate support at scholar level and familiar level. Uh, but it is very important to involve the family because stress family is a background of the develop of autism more or less uh, as high or uh, no high. And uh, I think that uh, these uh, people, girl or uh, boys, need to be accompanied by a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, it is impossible, in my opinion, uh, not consider a, a biochemical, clinical biochemical approach together with by psychology, educational uh, behavior, uh, because uh, uh, there are um, a lot of paper regarding the uh, biochemical, clinical biochemical molecular dysfunction. Uh, autism seems to be uh, a multi-genetic problem, but uh, I ask, is multi-genetic problem to induce autism or a autism spectrum of autism induce multi-genetic problem? Uh, I, my opinion is that uh, uh, environmental and food habits need to be investigated uh, in order to perform uh, some epidem epidemiological studies considering also these uh, aspects. Uh, I, I would to react at some point uh, of view. Uh, I, I agree with you that uh, uh, you have to help the child, the girl, when they're in, to live in, 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 in their own uh, uh, environment and the families, but not only when as a child, but also as an adolescent and as a grown up. Because what I see in our uh, the girls I see in my department is that they in every stage they go and they have different uh, problems and, and they need different approaches. Every step is much more difficult for an autistic girl than for a not autistic girl. So a lifelong approach. I agree with that because the likelihood of women still staying at home as adults um, means I think it's important that the family is, is involved right through their lives because they often don't ever leave home. And it's almost as though they need to be encouraged and supported to leave home and live independently when that's such a difficult thing for parents because they're protecting them. And I've got a colleague out there who's nodding, who's very okay with adults who we could speak more eloquently on that, but I think that's one of our big issues um, for the future, is supporting these women as adults through their families. And especially in, the, in that I want to um, uh, acknowledge what you were saying, is <clears throat> not to try to fit them in a, a regular female model, but fit them in who they are. And um, in that sense, uh, you need a lot of interaction with the family to help the family 
um, see the, 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 the woman in their ASD child um, uh, as someone special that, that's going to develop in a special way and I very much agree that um, it's, it's, it's not an education that you complete in one time, you know, it's, it's, it's really a permanent process of trying to find out and uh, it's so important to involve the, aut the autistic girl itself from a young age because uh, one of the other pitfalls is to think for them instead of uh, accommodate to what they really want. I think, um, sorry, just, just to say something about that, what, uh, just to re say what Patricia was saying earlier is that as they develop their sexuality and their gender, it changes. It changes over time. And so we've got one role in, within education. That girl's going to be going through different experimental phases as adults, and the family and everybody need to support these girls through that because ultimately they'll find their own way, possibly a bit later than average, but they'll find their own way in some stage if they get given the support. And to, to add to that, one of, one of the things that really struck me was what you were telling about cyber, you know. Um, there, are, there are a couple of interesting studies that are coming out uh, shortly on the use of internet for communication, you know, because uh, many uh, men and women with autism spectrum disorders uh, can communicate quite well through internet. But then again, it's, it's, it's so important to know how vulnerable these girls can be. Look, I think one of the, the things that I, I've seen in, in my research, and I, I've got a, a number of research programs going on some of these questions to do with uh, sexuality, sexuality of females, relationship developments, relationship development with females, and the thing that we're seeing in those is that one of the things that's not being spoken of here is that a large number of autistic young women are actually ultimately very successful at achieving what it is that they're, they're looking for. And what we've got to look at is not just how to make uh, autistic people, well, in fact, we shouldn't be looking at how, how to make autistic people typically developing. That's the issue. What we should be looking at is finding strategies to maximise outcomes for these people that maximise on their skill set. And what we've seen in the studies that we're doing, and a number of my students will be publishing this area in the, in the next few years, uh, is that girls who have developed their skills and have been assisted by those around them to develop those skills and helped have been the most successful at I, I, uh, having a, a, a sexuality that doesn't get them labelled as weird uh, and uh, to develop relationships uh, that are sustaining and lifelong. And we've, we've got a number of studies on the relationships. We're, we've actually found that the best relationships have been, uh, uh, some of them in fact, have been between autistic uh, Affected males and affected females, uh, and, and they, 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 in fact, the surprising thing that struck me, most amazing, was when my student, this is one of my students, Belinda, came and she said, oh, look, we've got these, uh, these cases, and we actually looked into these cases, none of them knew of each other's diagnosis before they started their relationship, and those relationships were the most successful in that whole study. It was fascinating stuff. So what we've got to do is we've got to look toward maximising whatever it is that they bring to their lives and giving them a set of skills that give them a more fulfilling, enriching life, which is what they're looking for. The thing that you mentioned earlier about girls uh, looking for relationships, absolutely critical in all of those studies. Girls look for relationships. But the other thing I would say is a large number of boys do too. And we've got to maximise both of those sets of skills. I, I agree with that. Um, some of the women I've spoken to have said that as women they tend to find the most quality of relationships, those people most like them, with the most shared interests that are most like them, whereas men tend to choose women that compensate for them. So, and, and I think that, that that is one of the most important things, I think, is, is those, those relationships. But your point about um, men, we, we, we've talked about girls and women and gender and all of that, but I've had a couple of men that have come to my talks on girls and have actually said that they could relate to the this di as, as men, actually. So it's not all girls and not all boys. There's no straight line, is there? And a, and a lot of men haven't been picked up, haven't been diagnosed till quite late for exactly the same reasons. So I think your point about looking at everybody, girls can help us learn more about boys as well. Yeah.
Um, thank you very much for your presentations. I find it fascinating, all speakers. And I've got a question, in fact, for all of you. Um, what I find disturbing is that we tend to look at the, at the superficial phenotype and the observed behavior. And I think what you've all indicated is that we need to look behind the observed behavior. And what worries me is the diagnostic in instruments we use, the ADOS and the ADI, are um, instruments which, uh, which use observed behavior for a classification. And if, um, if we cannot adapt these instruments to look behind the observed behavior, maybe at least we should think of a different algorithm for male and female vision. Uh, I'm going to talk completely on something I don't know anything about. But <laughs> just discussing this, um, we've been discussing this with Dr. J um, Lorna Wing and Judy Gould recently. We're both saying that they are now diagnosing more women than they have ever done before. But what they're actually doing is using all the knowledge and skills that they've gained in all the years to interpret it exactly as you said. And it needs to be somebody really skilled. You can't just take a checklist for, for these girls and these women. And it takes a full day of an intense, um, you know, sort of interview question. But with somebody with a large amount of knowledge, and both Lorna and Judy were saying it's the most challenging thing definitely is to diagnose these women, but they put a lot of time into it. 100% I'll be elaborating on that uh, topic tomorrow morning uh, more extensively, but one of the things that um, I've, I, I really learned this morning is that one of the problems you run into is, of course, um, the diagnosis is made at a behavioral level. level. We know that there are um, neuropsychological profile uh, issues involved uh, with strengths and weaknesses. We know that there are huge differences in terms of balance of neurotransmitters. So I think we really need individual diagnosis in depth. And one of the problems with the, uh, the studies you conduct on that, and I hope it's going to be solved by this, uh, this different approach, is that if you compare profiles, you're always losing uh, the point because they all uh, go back to the average and then you see no different differences. So I think that you're quite right. We need to change gears. We need to think more in terms of profiles. We need to think more in terms of individual diagnosis in depth and then try to fit the guidance programs to the individual needs. And um, one of the beauties in uh, autism research is that back from the 1980s, the trias of wing has helped us to do a lot of research. But I think that we're, we're, we're hitting the boundaries and we need to really change our way of approaching it to, uh, to, to move for forward. One of the big things that you need to remember, and I think we all need to remember, is that we've only been trying to do this for, what, 40 years? Uh, 50 years, 60 years since Canada, and many of the questions that we're still asking, we're still trying to define what the question really is. Uh, and that's actually the focus of what I was trying to talk about today, was that we need to stop looking, as Rutgers had just pointed out, at uh, a simple score approach. If you look at a simple score approach, it's very often very difficult to pick up subtlety. Subtlety is only seen when you look at the combination of things. And the interesting thing is, clinicians are very skilled at doing this. This is precisely the point that a clinician is good at. Why can Lorna Wing in her 80s still pick up cases uh, and spend a whole day studying them? It's because she's a remarkably skilled clinician. And what it is about being a remarkably skilled clinician is that you see subtly. And you see subtly not by looking at one measure up and down, you see subtly and looking at the relationship of many things. And instruments that can look at the relationships of many things need to be developed. But in order to develop them, we need to find out what the relationships are first. And hence, that's what's being talked about today. What are the relationships at multivariate levels? And that's, I think, the most interesting future direction for this. And this is where we'll find ways of doing this. But I think getting past clinicians and skilled clinicians, not likely to do for a very long time. I don't have to say something extra because I totally agree uh, with, with you. And I also teach uh, uh, our students uh, to look at the, the girls in a different way because they're just uh, looking at the, 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 the facts that uh, you see in the, the scoring list and say, no, you have to look a different way. And we and they need a lot of uh, experience to to help them to see it. 